Welcome in, everybody. I'm Joey. Now, who wants to see a clean start into turn one at the Nürburgring in the rain? I thought you might. So here we go. Off the line, getting a good start, passing a fellow Mazda on the right side. These Mazdas, good acceleration, great handling, a good combo for the Nürburgring. And here we go into turn one. <laughs> and isn't that a beautiful sight? What a fucking mess. <laughs> Cleanest turn one I've seen. It's just a bunch of pros doing their best out here. That's all it is. So eventually, after you've played this game enough, you kind of start to realize that maybe it's better to go into turn one a little slower than everyone else, let all the shit go down, and then just strut on by as if nothing happened. That's the strategy I used here, and I'm not facing the wrong way, kind of like that guy in the BMW, so it hasn't failed me yet, and I'm actually up into 12th place. Just a really decent and clean start to the race. Don't you just love to see it? So this is the GTX hopper that Forza's added, and no, surprisingly, it doesn't stand for the getting trucked experience. It's the Grand Touring Experimental, and it's just a bunch of insane-looking, crazy-sounding Grand Touring cars from the 70s, 80s, 90s, as we have some guy rejoining the track and creating a minor sandstorm in his Audi. But just have a listen to this car. This Mazda sounds nuts. It sounds like my grandmother screaming over the phone and talking in like five times speed. It's annoying, it's scary, and if it was a car, I'd get the fuck out of the way. Anyways, it doesn't seem to be scaring my Mazda driving teammate in the slightest. He had no intention of letting me go up the inside, so we'll try it around the outside, see if that works out any better. But he slowly moves over to the left. I run out of road and I'm slowing down as I'm scraping the left tires all over the grass, dirtying those things up and dirtying them some more around the dog leg to the right. Fortunately, no penalty coming from that one though. I have noticed that the penalty system seems to be a little more lenient when it's raining out, so I guess they just anticipate that we're all just gonna drive off the track anyways. They know their community very well, so they tend to be a little more lenient in those situations. This guy just decides to drive off into the grass to test that theory, I'm sure. Now we'll look to stay ahead of the Nissan going into turn one. I've got the top end advantage, but we'll be pretty even under braking. The gap is closing pretty quickly to the Oldsmobile up front. I run into the back of him. We got a domino effect with the Nissan running to the back of me, getting a face full of exhaust fumes, but that is pretty fortunate for us. We'll keep him behind and we'll try to find our way around the Oldsmobile and the M1 in front of him. So coming out of the arena section, we'll want to stay closer to the left side so that we can take a better line out onto the straight and hopefully we'll get the better of the Oldsmobile here. Side by side, he doesn't want to give me a whole lot of space. He's trying to cop a field, as my British friends would say. And we'll try to go around the outside here, but once again, not leaving a whole lot of space for me there. And I'll have to slow down and find another way by him. Maybe in the next corner if we're lucky, but that Oldsmobile is going to have us on the straights. And we've got the advantage pretty much everywhere else. This Mazda is one of the best cars in the hopper. And I just took one of the best cars in the hopper very wide. And so did pretty much everybody else. So fortunately, we'll actually get a pass done out of it. Drift wide, off the track. And again, no penalties, so I think that's the leniency of the rain coming in. And thank God, because I would have gotten like a million penalties this race. But yeah, this Mazda, definitely one of the better cars in the hopper. I think the Audi is probably the best, unless you're at a track with a bunch of straights. Then the top speed of that thing is really going to kill you. But pretty much everywhere else, the acceleration and handling on that thing are unrivaled. So that is basically an automatic win. And then for those tracks with the long straights, it seems like the better top speed cars are the VET and the BBLM. Those will be your front runners for those tracks. Going into the chicane, the Oldsmobile is back. We're both negotiating some space without incident through the chicane. Very nicely done. And we'll be battling it out into the final corner. Except we're going into slow motion because dumbass made a mistake. I've expertly hit the pit entry wall, gone spinning, and thoroughly embarrassed myself so if you want to hit the pen entry wall that's how you do it you do it with precision and accuracy and then time up the spin 360 so that you're facing forward and gun it back down the straight that's what all the mlg pro wall hitters will tell you hit walls bounce off of them with precision and accuracy and trust the process that's what i've done there to the t apparently i'm an mlg pro 
So this self-proclaimed MLG Pro is going to try to repass the guys he just lost position to. And we went three wide there. Things got dicey. The M1, I think, came out a little worse for wear. The other Mazda is still very close. And then the M1 is going to appear right on the inside there. We make contact. Uh, that probably was my fault. I probably should have recognized he was going to be there and gave him some space. But um, we're just going to keep going because I'm an MLG Pro. <laughs> But I've somehow find myself in sixth place. We've had that crazy turn one, and I hit the pit entry wall and spun out and died. So all things considered, things are going pretty well. And we're going down the hill into the hairpin, and we'll try to go up the inside, or at least have a look up the inside of fifth place. Wasn't there. But he's taking that outside line. The space opens up, and I will happily take that. So we are up into the top five. He's not going to give up that easy, though. Into the Schumacher S, coming up alongside. I'm up onto the grass, getting tapped from behind, somehow keeping it together. And we are through. We're both in the same Mazda, though, so it's not going to be easy to pull away, especially when you just opt to not turn. That doesn't really help, but this is the spec series, so there's no upgrading the cars. We are allowed to tune, but no upgrading, so we're pretty much in the same car, battling it out for position. He's in the slipstream, but he's not gaining very much at all. That gap hovering around two tenths. So I'm not defending this corner. I think I've got it. And then all of a sudden from behind, getting tapped on that left side. And he had no plans of slowing down after I spun. He was going to smash that driver's side door. So I'm back in eighth place. And that's kind of the story of this entire race. It's making a couple of passes, fucking up, or getting spun or spinning myself out by hitting the pit entry wall and then having to make up those spots again. And there we go by the M1 once again. So we can finally hopefully put that to rest and not have to pass him again. Who I'd really like to pass is this darn Mazda up front that spun me. So we're closing in on him. It's lap four. I'd love to make the pass before we pit. These tires are starting to go. They're not quite in the yellow yet, but they're getting there. He's just not going to give me the pleasure of making the pass. He's just going to drive straight off into the sand and embarrass himself. I definitely know the feeling. And now we're skipping to lap five. And I'm remembering now that I didn't pit on lap four because for some reason no one pit on lap four, which is when I would think you usually would. But I hadn't done the race before. And so I figured I'll stay out. Maybe they know something I don't. I don't think they did because now our, all of our tires are just dead. Well, they're not quite dead yet. They're getting close to that danger territory we've still got a little bit of grip and we're fighting it out making my way by baku track 03 and trying to go around the outside of the oldsmobile a brave move going off the track again there but if the last time i did that was any indication yep i won't get a penalty for doing that again there was a little touch there but i'm on the brakes before i spin him out and he becomes me a couple of laps ago that wouldn't be good and now we'll finally head into the pits and get some new tires but he is taking his good old time and that Audi almost slipped by me and then take a look at this formation look at how perfectly formed we are we're like three feet in front and in back of the other absolutely perfect it's like one of those flyovers at a football game it looked beautiful well done boys and coming out of the pits into turn one he's gonna do what I do almost every time but I didn't do this time go deep when coming out of the pits. I did pretty well there, spotted the breaking point, and we got by him nice and easy. So there was an easy pass, except it was all for nothing because once again, I screwed up. The Olds follows me into the sand, but Baku Truck 03 goes right on by. So we'll need to make that pass up into eighth again. I wouldn't be waiting long. I'm not gonna make the pass on the Audi, but I will get by this Mazda that's off in the grass. There's something going on, by the way with these Mazdas and being in grass, including myself, there's like a magnetic attraction or something, or maybe it just so happens that all the terrible drivers, including myself, are in Mazdas this race. And maybe that Audi too. The guy in front crossing the pit line, heading into the pits, almost hitting the wall like I did. He's uh, a little more fortunate than I was, and he'll stay alive and get into the pits just fine. And we'll cross the line starting lap seven. So two more laps to go. We're in the top five. Nothing makes sense. I should be in last place. We got fourth place coming out of the pits, going deep, and third place not too far in front of him, only maybe a couple of seconds. So a podium somehow is in the cards. Don't know how we're going to do it, but we have to first get around fourth place. 
there is actually one thing in this race that makes sense, and that's that the leader is 25 seconds ahead of me. So he's obviously managed to avoid all the crappy driving going on back here and has pulled away quite a bit, and I'm sure that second place is probably up there with him. Third place, though, is now right in front of us. He was moving pretty slow through that corner, so he might be on old tires. Can't quite tell, but that Audi was not going to let me through. He had no intention to let me up the inside, kind of like that Mazda earlier. And we're back down in sixth place. So we'll reset and do what we did before and try to get back by him. The Mazda going wide, and if we take a look at the leaderboard, we can see he has not pit yet. So he's definitely dealing with some pretty serious tire degradation. Now we can set our eyes on in fourth and third place. Try to get that podium, getting the run out of the Schumacher S. That will be fourth place, making the pass on the left side. And now we've got the inside for the left-hander. And that glowing indicator will fade to nothing. So we got by him just fine. And then we'll make the pass on third place on the straight. It's not secure yet, though. Heavy on the brakes. Don't want to fuck this part up. Spotting that apex, hitting the cone on the inside perfectly. Down in first gear, powering out. And we've got it secured. And that's where I'd come to finish the race. Getting third place. It was absolutely nuts. I don't think I should have finished there. Quite a bit of luck played a part in that, I think. But I did set the fastest lap, actually. A 20169. So the driving somehow kept me in the race as well. And we'll move on to a couple of short races. So this one at Le Mans. I was slowing down because there was actually a viewer in the race that I wanted to race with. So slowed down until I saw him go by and we just have an even bigger disaster of a turn one. It's an Audi roadblock. Never have I considered reversing going through turn one, but I did there and eventually things cleared up and we can get going again but that was one of the worst turn ones i've been a part of and somehow i finished in third place in that one too that was just a, a pretty boring race though so weird how we had two disastrous turn ones and then somehow i finished in third place and then to finish us off we've got mazda laguna seca or it's weathertech laguna seca now i don't think i'll ever remember to get that right on the first try but weathertech laguna seca we're in the nissan and this thing has a massive rear end. Like, that is only fans material right there. It's absolutely huge, and people would pay money to look at pictures of that, I think. But the story of this race was second place, Danissimo, one of the greatest names to say of all time. Danissimo was on my ass the whole time. Only a couple of tents back from lap four on, and I was a little worried that he was only back there because he wanted to look at the rear end of the car which would have been a little weird, but I think he was actually there because he wanted to make the pass. So it stayed like that the entire race, only a few tenths back, and here's the start of lap 11 out of 11, the final lap. We've been racing like 15 minutes up to this point, and he was putting me under pressure the entire time. So I was pretty proud of myself to still be up there. He did, at this point, have four tenths worth of penalties, so... I'm feeling pretty comfortable, but four tenths isn't gonna save me if I make a big mistake. If I drive off into the sand, I'm losing seconds, not tenths. So I still needed to uh, keep my focus and keep driving well, like I had been for the past 15 minutes under pressure, and I was feeling pretty confident I was gonna get the win until the screen goes black, a loading screen pops up, another loading screen after that pops up, and then I'm back in the menus and it tells me I lost connection to live. So at this point, my head went through a door. No, <laughs> what actually happened was I just sat there in my chair staring at the screen for like five minutes, just in disbelief that I had been disconnected on that last lap. I really wanted that win, but uh, Xbox Live and uh, Bill Microsoft thought a little differently. So uh, anyways, guys, that's going to do it for the video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did. Do all the stuff the YouTubers tell you to do at the ends of videos, and I will talk to you in the next one. Alrighty, bye everybody.